on this episode of the Live Free Podcast. We're with Jake Lemmerman, CEO and founder of Current Station Media. We're going to be speaking to Jake about the importance of the ever-shifting digital landscape and how you can take advantage of making more money digitally, growing your education, and continually developing yourself in the new digital era. Jake, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So Jake, why don't you start off telling the listeners a little bit about your backstory so they get an yeah. idea of where you come from. Yeah. So um, I'm from West Virginia, a school called Marshall. Um, I moved there when I was seven from Iowa. Um, and I pretty much grew up in West Virginia. Um, and I went to college at Marshall. And during that time period at Marshall, I... Uh, kind of became woke in the sense of the things that were being taught um, didn't seem to align with my goals or even the degree that I was going for because I was going for marketing. Um, and so within that four-year gap, I knew that, you know, I need to go further in education. And um, I started working at a basketball gym at the time. Um, after quitting a corporate job at Orange Theory Fitness, I might as well go ahead and just say the brand's name. But it was a it was a corporate job, nine dollars an hour. You know, hustling. You know, working really hard like a slave, and the money was just little. And I was thankful to get an opportunity at a basketball gym called Sports City U Basketball in Hurricane, West Virginia. And this mentor um, at the time was my basketball coach, uh, pretty much for my whole life. Uh, and he gave me the opportunity. He said, you know, I've got some, um, goals that I want to achieve through social media and I need some help. And at the time at Orange Theory, I was doing social media and I was like, great, oppor uh, great opportunity to, uh, really dive deep and, uh, get some experience where there isn't such a chokehold. I think corporations do that. I think, uh, they don't give their employees enough freedom to really be creative. Um, so discovering my talents through uh, college um, around my sophomore year through uh, my senior year. I was just putting my head down uh, working for that gym. Um, and I started to dig super deep into media, cameras, videos. I would uh, go to any call or any uh, local high school game and just do a video. That's where all my creativity came out. Um, as well as working there, uh, I started to really see that I was kind of good at building brands through social. I kind of understood um, the framework of what makes, what creates attention. Um, so I would say one of my big successes that I really started to like say, okay, I want to do this. I want to create my own brand was about senior year in college when uh, we had a uh, summer basketball um, camp and we needed to fill some spots there, and I ran some Facebook ads around the area. It was kind of uh, Ohio, West Virginia type area, and in that month, we produced, we got like, uh, I think it was like 55, 60 some kids at this camp, and we were charging like 250 per slot, um, and typically, they were doing around 20 kids, 15 kids, so that's one of my big successes. That was like the first um, confidence builder and where I'm like, okay, you know, I'm actually doing something for somebody else. Um, and why not use these talents and create something that I can have long term, something that is my baby and something I kind of modeled my behavior after um, Jimmy Clayton. He was the business owner, kind of like you know, I admire small business owners because of the freedom uh, that you guys really are after. It's not so much that you're after uh, the, the admiration, but you guys were kind of like my Tony Robbins. I was just look at small business uh, owners and be like, wow, like they get to have their own business, do what they want um, and live a life that's enjoyable. And I saw my dad, you know, my dad's a a uh, big corporate guy and he you know if it was his route um, I would be in the military and I would have been um, working you know at a corporate job and, and working my way up and year after year just 
letting corporations suck the energy out of me because I truly believe that. Um, well, I mean, I think that I resonate with that a lot because my dad worked for the same company for 39 years. And once he retired, he didn't know what to do anymore. He didn't really have any passions yeah. that he lived for. And his whole identity was built around working for that company. Mm -hmm. So I felt like he was lost for, and I still feel like he, he doesn't have anything that he's really educated himself on to continue his, uh, to continue growing and evolving as a human. Yeah. And I personally thought that it would be better to bet on myself, just yeah. like you saw that it was better to bet on yourself and then you would be in control of something that's more valuable than money, which is time. Yes. And your experience at Orange Theory, I think, cemented that for you. Oh, yeah. Understanding that you were working for someone else's dream mm -hmm. because somebody built Orange Theory. Yeah. And you were the one working for their media company, yeah. making $9 an hour, <laughs> and they were benefiting millions of dollars. Yes. So their dream was being built on your back. Yeah. And I didn't want to be the kind of person who was building someone else's dream with the life that I have. Yeah. I figured if I'm going to build someone else's, I might as build my own. Yeah. And now, and what we were talking about earlier with the changing digital landscape, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for people now yeah. that there wasn't before definitely. to build their own dreams. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and what you said earlier about going to the football games and just recording stuff, yeah. you weren't getting paid for that. Nope. But did you enjoy it? Loved it. You loved it. And it gave you the reps, yep. just like in the gym, the reps you needed to get better at editing, yeah. to get better at recording, yep. angles, understanding, so that when you were ready to launch Current Station, yeah. you had the tools that were going to allow you to be successful. Yeah. And I think a lot of people miss that when they think about following a passion or following their dream, is that, yeah, in the beginning, you're not going to be making a ton of money. Yeah. But you're not in it for the money. No. The money will come when you find what you're passionate about yeah. and you begin to expand your energy towards helping other people. Yeah. So the whole idea of Live Free Miami, my gym, is a stepping stone towards creating freedom in my own life yes. and other people's lives. Yes. And our main value at Live Free Miami is health. Yeah. Because without health, you cannot have freedom. Mm -hmm. You cannot earn a living. Mm -hmm. So I would like to hear from you how you started to notice that even though you weren't making as much money as you wanted to make, the freedom that you had allowed you to open up more doors and be more creative. Because you started in yeah. West Virginia, yeah. but now you're in Miami. Yeah. So how did coming to Miami come to fruition so i would say i was you know i was about to graduate i was finishing up uh at marshall and i was still working at this gym and at the time i convinced uh my guy angelo uh aka jello to move from florida because he was in orlando at the time i was like yo listen i work at this basketball gym but the owner is giving me so much freedom to really change the brand change the culture, change a system where we can make more money and where, you know, there's only about three employees at the gym. So I was like, he's promised me and I know I've got this trust because he's been my mentor since like, since I was like five. Um, so we had that trust where if, if, if we made money off this business, wherever we went with this business, we were all going to win. And he established that environment. So we all pretty much trust the vision. Um, and it was just a funny turn. It just, it was such a, it was a wild road. I mean, I was open. I was a guy that's open to any opportunities that came my way. And around the end of graduation, um, we went from Sports City U to wanting to build a gym called Jumper Time Gym, uh, where he was a trainer. And I saw that, man, I want to make a system where if he happens to get sick or die or anything happens, this universal system can still run. So I wanted him to create the workouts, uh, create templates uh, where uh, players can come in and get 
on a basketball shooting machine. I'm sure you've seen those shooting machines. Um, and basically get the same workouts from that trainer, but now we're using technology. So he believed in the vision. He bought uh, four shooting machines because uh, we had two gyms um, and they were split down the middle. But he bought shoot, uh, four shooting machines. And so we could do more individual training because he did $50, uh, $50 an hour for personalized training. But now we have a shooting machine that kind of coaches you. As long as he comes up with the workout, now he can kind of just browse and make more money. So that was the vision, and I wanted to build the brand as big as I could. Uh, and so I came this up, is pre-pandemic? This is Yeah, this is uh, like maybe 2018. So 2019. you were already beginning to leverage technology. Yeah, I was already um, – I already understood like the whole point of building a business is to build a book of business where you can sell a business because uh, that's – what we all want to, we want to get to the point where we can become free and maybe even do other things. Maybe there's more things that we want to do than just this business. I'm sure in my life, I'll, I'm not sure, sure, but I'm sure if I sold a business, I would have other things that I would love to explore. Cause I'm just, I'm so interested in so well, many different things. I really like the fact that you use that word explore because I feel like the old paradigm that people grew up with, especially myself, which was go to high school, finish high school, now you go to college. Now you go to college for four years. Now you, get, you take your degree and you get a job and you work for 30 maybe. years. Yeah, maybe. Now <laughs> especially. But back then it was like, okay, yes. you got a degree, you can get a job. Yes. And then you can work for 30 years and then you can retire. Yeah, you can pay off and that loan. And then that is, <laughs> yeah, that's your, your end game. Yeah. But I don't think humans are meant to uh, work in such... Um, finite terms. Yeah. I believe that in order to truly be happy as a person, you need to continually explore new topics, yeah. explore new experiences, yeah. and grow and evolve continually throughout your life, even when you're 60. Yeah. And why should we enjoy our lives at 60 when we can enjoy our lives at right 30? Now. Right now, today. Because that's the highest quality of life is living at 24-7 in a beautiful state. And when you hit that beautiful state, just like Tony Robbins says, when you hit that beautiful state, you experience a better quality of life. Um, I think that corporations, to your point, corporations are, like I said, it crushed my creativity. And it was almost like slavery. It was almost like, don't worry about your dreams. You're here. You're going to work this long. You're going to be here from this long. And we'll pay you this little and... And some people actually like that security. Yeah. You know, because yes. we're, we're programmed to want security. Yes. And um, I saw a cool quote the other day, which was, a salary is what you're given to forget your dreams. Yeah. And what happens to a lot of people, and this happened to me when I was a firefighter, is I had a nice salary. I had benefits. I had a pension, yeah. but I didn't have fulfillment within myself. Yeah. So I had to really take a look at my life and figure out what I truly wanted my life to be. Did I want it to be a life of servitude mm -hmm. or did I want it to be a life of exploration? Yeah. And yeah, in the beginning, I'm sure you felt this too. It's a little scary Yeah. when you take yourself out of the matrix, as yes. they say, yeah. and you begin to do things according to your own terms. Mm -hmm. But you notice real quick that your fears are just that, fears. Yeah. Yep. You know, they're not real. Yep. And the sun is going to rise, you're going to get up, and you're going to find opportunities at every corner. Yeah. Pers perspective is, is very big in all of that. And I think, and this is just being, me being so transparent, I think... It's not that it's taking advantage of the things that you're blessed with, but if you're blessed with loving parents that will open the door to you where you can live in their basement or a spare bedroom, think about that perspective. Or would you rather go spend money on an apartment and stress yourself out at a corporate job and make you unhappy and you're just continuous in that cycle or just be humble enough? You know, it's, I think... That's the thing is we're not humble enough to say, you know, after college, it's OK if I go live with my parents, if they're willing to allow me to live with them, to earn enough money to save up 
and do something or start something that I truly love um, because we care about outside perspective. We're trying to match. Keeping up with the Joneses. Keeping up with the Joneses. And like when you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, I mean, you're going to constantly be in that state where you're comparing yourself. Oh, this person has a better body, has a better, uh, better job. He's got a better car. More money. How much is that? I mean, that's going to wear on you. You know, and because there's always going to be somebody with a better body. Yeah. There's always going to be somebody with a nicer car. Yes. With a nicer house. And, and I with used more to money. be in that. You know, I used to be in that. I wanted to I wanted to make dude in as stupid as this sounds. And I'm sure there's people out there as stupid as this sounds. I, the only reason I wanted to make an extra thousand a month was so I could go pay uh, to get a rental car to get it like a. this was my dream at like 18 or 19. I wanted to get a Maserati and rent it. And I was living, because I was uh, transitioning at that time, but I was living with, um, actually, sorry, that was 18 I wanted. That was my goal. That was my big goal because I just got out of high school. I took a year off of high school, um, and I moved to Minnesota, and I, I lived with my sister in her basement. And I was like, I was looking up all these businesses that I could start, and there was this, like, uh, pyramid scheme business that I was about to jump in on, and I was like, well, if I can get this many people, then I can rent that Maserati. And then, you know, that's kind of when everything perspective started settling in because then I moved from Minnesota to Atlanta. Then I worked, I got a job at, as a valet, uh, valet attendant. That was one of my first jobs ever. Uh, and I got to drive all those cool cars. And my, like you said, my self-development really started to, at that point, I started listening to podcasts. I started listening to a lot of uh, Tony Robbins, Gary V. I took a step back and I'm like, man, I'm becoming I'm, I'm not comparing myself as much as I used to, and I'm actually becoming happier. So, yeah, so to your point, like, comparison is probably the death of everybody's dreams. Once you start comparing yourself to others, you're only in competition with them, and you're kind of living their life, but if you truly know yourself, I think that's a big thing. You got to know yourself. Like, I don't care what you think. I don't care what he thinks. I don't care what anybody thinks. I know that in my life, if, if um, especially at that time period in, in college, uh, after I left the gym, um, I knew at that life, I was like, okay, if shit hits the fan, I can go live with my parents. I, I can be in debt, but I can go live with my parents, you know? So at that time, like you said, I wanted to create something um, that even though I had, I had probably the most highest authority at the gym, out of all the other people, because I was making all the decisions, I made the logo, we made the brand. Here it was still the wasn't your gym. It still wasn't my gym, and it would have. It still is great because we still have a great relationship. But it wasn't my gym, and so like the year that year, my senior year, um, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna start this social media account, right? Because I know how to brand, and I'm just gonna build something. I have no freaking clue what it's gonna be, but I'm just gonna build something." And I was like, I've so always no heard, expectations. Yeah, no expectations. So like, this is something. Because expectations can really screw you up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna build this social media account. I'm gonna post every day and be accountable. I'm gonna create one habit that's consistent, and I'm gonna pick something I naturally love. And that's what I've always heard from uh, Gary V's in the world. All these people, they say, do uh, start something that you actually love. So I loved college football constantly was posting on there uh at first it was actually called college gamestop that was the name i didn't know what it was going to be um and then i realized wow it's too narrow but i was still working at the gym i was still posting on here and then all of a sudden i uh, two people hit me up i got a call from one day he lived with me after um this was like january no this is towards june of my senior year this guy hit me up he was a sports agent Marcus Crenshaw, he's cool coolest CEO on Instagram. Uh, still love the guy. Uh, but he's a WNBA sports agent, and he hit me up. He's like, yo, I got this idea to create this movie for these WNBA players. They don't get much attention, but uh, Jimmy, he knew Jimmy at the time, uh, which was the gym owner. Um, and he hit me up, and he was like, I got this idea. So he took me on the road, and, like, I swear, we went on the road for, like, probably like six, seven, eight months where we were just going everywhere. We were going to Atlanta. We were going to Fort Lauderdale. We were going to Miami. We went to the Dominican Republic. We almost went to Greece. Uh, but we were going 
to all these different games in uh, Chicago. Um, I was filming the athletes. Yeah, I was giving them promo videos. And so I would just film their games and create something creative. And they loved it. And it got a lot of spike in the WNBA um, culture. How did did he find you? Uh, So he knew Jimmy, the the owner at the gym. He knew Jimmy. And uh, he saw Jimmy's content and was like, yo, that's kind of fresh. Like, that's whoever you got behind the camera is doing really good for you. Who, Who is it? So he gave my name, uh, and we reached out to each other. So you created an opportunity yeah, through yeah. repetition. Yeah, just through repetition. And so when you were in college, you were studying marketing, right? Yes. When you began to explore your own talents, how much of what you learned in college was applicable for your new business? Do you feel like you learned a lot in college? Or do you feel like you learned a lot actually doing the repetitions? I think I think college was a great step for me in the sense of I needed, like you said, explore. I needed to explore going to college so that I didn't regret what if. So in a way, I obeyed my parents the pressure to go, and I respected that knowing subconsciously that you've got to, especially in business, you know, you've got to consistently learn the newest methods. And in college, it just, it was great for me to mature there. But I I say this to a lot of people, you're really paying $80,000, $100,000 for the experience. And you could come out on top with a great experience because you met so many people and now you have more opportunity. But for me personally, um, nothing in college marketing wise uh, is anything I use in uh, my business. I mean, my marketing tactics, um, there's no how to drive attention to your business. There's the, the teachings they teach in colleges are so corporate CEO that 99% of us are not even going to get to that level. Like in one of my college classes, we were making a decision for McDonald's on, on such a big decision. I can't, I can't even remember what the question was, but I had to laugh at it. I'm like, dude, we're never, any of us are going to actually have to make this decision. Um, but it's just not applicable. And, and that's what I wanted to bring up because I feel that in the shifting digital landscape that we're in now, yeah. I feel like the digital economy has been sped up because of the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. And I feel that college is becoming antiquated. Yeah. Especially like you said, with the same teachings that they've been teaching over and over again. Yes. And people thinking that if you finish four years of learning, that that's all you need. Yep. And if you I, go five years, you're a master. Right. And I've found that the best education is a lifelong education. Yes. I went to college for about eight years because I went part time. Yeah. I started at community college and then I went to FIU because I wanted to play football. And then during football, we had to take a full load of classes and play football. Yeah. Which is kind of absurd because it's kind of hard to do both. Yeah. It's a full time job. And then, yeah, it's a full time job. Exactly. With no pay. And what, what, (laughs) what really looking back, what amazes me is that I was supposed to make a lifelong decision at 18 years old. Yeah. That I want to put uh, myself into multiple thousands of dollars of debt at 18 years old when um, I could literally take the same money, invest it in, say, some sort of stock or buy some real estate. And then I can begin to learn on my own through the internet. Yep. So now why should kids go and put their money, go into debt? Because guess what? At 18, you're At making 18. such a huge decision based on your credit, based on your life. You put a, you're putting pressure on that kid to make a decision. It's like at 18? And also it's the, the worst thing about it is they're not, they're not even giving you the option to really explore like you I've never heard a teacher say well man I mean maybe you just take you don't go to college and you just take a year out and just kind of figure it out I mean you're only 18 you know I wish somebody would have said that to me no they're saying 
I mean, what are you going to do if you don't? Well, you look at teachers and their products of the system. They obviously are doing it because they think the system works. If you were to talk to, say, a successful business owner, they might tell you, hey, take a year off. Start learning what you're passionate about. Start, oh, you like recording? You like movie making? Make 100 movies this year Mm -hmm. and see where that takes you. Yeah. For me, when I got my level one CrossFit certification, I've always been into exercise, health, nutrition. And once I found CrossFit after MMA, I decided that I wanted to get my level one because I figured it was more education. Mm -hmm. That education led me to being able to open my own business, my own gym, and that thing took me two days. It was 16 hours and cost me a thousand bucks. Yeah. And I've learned more owning my own business and coaching people than I ever did in college. Yeah. And I have $30,000 of debt because of college. Yes. And I got a degree in exercise physiology, which helped me understand how the body works. Yep. But I could have learned that on my own. I don't need, you don't need, people don't need to go into debt anymore. Yeah. Now with the new digital landscape, you can find free courses everywhere. Everywhere. You can go on something called YouTube and you can get any information you want. Yep. And I am starting to look at life in a different way where I want people to understand that if they continually work on themselves, their physical health, their mental health, mm-hmm. their emotional health, yep. their spiritual health, yep. opportunities will present themselves. Yes. Just like me and you met, I saw content you were putting on uh, Instagram. Yeah, my stories. Yeah. And I said, and you had already messaged the gym before that. That's why I followed you. Yes. And you were like, yo, I want to work out. Yeah. So then I saw your content and I was like, I really like what this kid is putting out into the world. And I want to be able to collaborate with him in some form or fashion. Yeah. And what you've showed me in just a small amount of time Uh, about building an audience is more relevant and more impactful than the two courses I took. I took a course with Goldman Sachs, which talked about running small businesses, and they had a portion on marketing. Then I took a marketing-specific course, which talked about marketing. None of them talked about the things that you talk about. And people need to understand that in order to be free, in order to have freedom and abundance that you need to continually educate yourself while investing in yourself. Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you use social media to grow a brand so that somebody who's watching this right now could take some tips from what you've learned and maybe apply it to their social media. Yeah. And so to your point, just to chime in on that is, Being a practitioner, like you said, is where you learn it all. Goldman Sachs, I'm not sure what the course material was like, but if you're a practitioner and you're really in it, like you you said yesterday, I really know this stuff because I'm really in it. Um, And I took a course as well. I took a Facebook uh, ads course. This is is kind of the different mindset. I'm not saying I don't know that if uh, you're in college, you've done something similar. But I actually spent $1,200 on a Facebook ads course of my own money when I was in college. And I spread that payment out of three months or something like that. But, I mean, if you're in college, think about even when you were in college, I mean, $1,200, that's a lot of money to learn about Facebook ads. But you're in college. Shouldn't shouldn't they be teaching Facebook ads in college? And I'll... I'll, Especially if you're a marketing major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll come back to your question. But the, the... I I had a conversation um, with somebody that was in college not too long ago, and I said they uh, they were in entrepreneurship. uh, That's an actual thing in college uh, is an entrepreneurship degree and uh, and a business degree. And so um, I said, you know what would be really cool if college really cared about you? You'd have one class um, in the your first freshman class and. The professor would be with you for four years, and this professor would be an entrepreneur, but a business development uh, uh, professor. And he says this to you. How awesome would this be in college? He says, okay, okay, class, here's your freshman. You're picking this route. Um, For the next four years, I want you to come up with a business idea, 
And for the next four years, we're going to develop it. So by the time you're out of college, you have a business, a real business, something that's actually generating money. Why are we not doing that? Not sure. Maybe this idea gets put out into existence, and that's what we're trying to do is basically bring more awareness to these topics. It's how different would college be if you went and you came out with a business? Oh, big time difference. Not so devastating at the end when you realize, oh, shit, you know, life is all about how much effort I put into myself and improve myself. And then you got to go through that, which is another four years, I feel like. I mean, I did four years of personal development just ongoing, and it's just every day ongoing. But I really tapped in my sophomore year where I'm like, I had great leaders around me. I had a great culture. I had great parents. And they were all enforcing, like, you just got to keep personally developing and exploring and trying new things. And you, it's not like uh, 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 the moment just suddenly appears in your overnight success. It's just you get better and better and you make different changes throughout your uh you evolve yeah so that's just an inter- interesting point that i wanted to bring up um to your point but what was the question again it was basically what do you think people need to understand when it comes to building an audience my perspective of building an audience is um it all starts with content right and we hear this so much so many times is content how how can uh we uh how can we communicate uh through content so it starts with content and there's only four ways that you can create content and i keep it super simple written content audio content video content photo content okay let's start with the simple so it's not so overwhelming um So that's the only way that you can possibly make content. So now create the content for your brand. And that is your your brand's perception. That is who you are. So now how can we get that content more attention? That is the second part of my formula is distribution. Distribution can be social media distribution, all your channels that you have. Uh, It can be niche distribution. So uh, DMing other Instagram accounts and asking if they, they want to collaborate on a giveaway or collaborate on something, right? Hey, could we come together on something? I really like your page, and I think we have similar audiences. You want to work together and collaborate and uh, distribute more content together? Um, so it's that distribution is such a big part. So the more distribution you get, the more attention you get. So everybody wants attention. We got content. That's the easy part. We got the content. We got our iPhone. We can create the content. Now we just need distribution to get attention to that content. And it's that third, the third pillar is community. How are you communicating with the community that you're building? And by being a practitioner, you understand what your audience likes, what your audience doesn't like. And I think that's the, the thing by being a practitioner, you, you just have this weird feeling like my audience is going to like this. They're really going to like this. And then sometimes you just wow, they didn't like that. (laughs) Move on. But it's the constant frequency of output. If if you're uh, a brand and you're only putting out one piece of content a day, that is the level of your frequency. Now, if a brand is putting out three times a day, this is their level of frequency. So how much how, how much are you amplifying the content that you're creating? How much amplification do you have and how high is your frequency? Look at Bleacher Report. Yeah. Look at Complex. Shade Room. My gosh. Right? All day, you're seeing their content in your face. Every day. And it's basically the same content over and over again. But every once in a while, something relevant speaks to you. Yeah. And you're like, that was cool. I'm going to follow that. Or, wow, I really learned something from there. I'm going to follow that. I think that for me, especially in my journey as a business owner, I started to understand how important an audience was when I began to want to sell programs, to sell merchandise. Because in the digital economy, I can only reach so many people, especially if my gym is closed, person to person. But in the digital economy, I can reach thousands of people. And if I'm really working on my mission to improve people's lives through building their lives around their health and becoming the best versions of themselves, then I owe it to everyone to build a bigger audience so that I can reach more people. Yeah. 
And if I only speak to the people in the gym, I'm only going to have so much ability to change the world. Yeah. And I think that as a business owner and as a father and as a person, my goal is to help more people be better yeah so that in tune with that they can help more people be better yeah lead by example and before you know it now you're making a shift yeah on a bigger perspective yeah you're not just helping one person lose weight you're helping a whole family because that person's happy yeah and what the digital platform has done for businesses is just giving you more of a playground you are now you back in the day you open a mom and pop sh- business, brick and mortar. Now you can go local, pin up papers. But in the digital field, you can start a business. Shopify, 30 bucks a month. Okay, now you're in business. Whew. Okay, get my LLC, you know, do the legal stuff. But you can start a business online and it's you have a better opportunity than brick and mortar because guess what? You have all of America, and if you know two languages, Spanish, English, now you got a lot of lot of uh, landscape in the whole world. Um, and I don't think people, I think people are coming to that point right now, especially with coronavirus. Sped it up. But we are now like, wait a second. You know, I see all these people have these big audiences. What are they doing? And they're just, they're actually more, um, more relaxed than the business owner at a brick and mortar. Cause you got to keep, you know, you got to keep the business running, you got to pay, pay the bills, you got to do all this stuff, but you got a business that can operate freely, uh, in the digital landscape and you know how to create attention. If you know how to create attention and you got an idea of what your gift is, what you like to do, you've got a great shot at starting a business in 2020. Not to mention the beauty of doing things online or creating in general creating. is that you do it once yes and then you can sell it over and yes. over again and then you can make money in your sleep yeah which is the goal yes the goal you can only make so much money with your time because yeah. your time is limited money is a tool money needs to work yeah. money does not sleep 24 7 if you write a book and you don't have an audience no one's gonna buy it anything if you have a huge audience then you write a book now it took you maybe a year to write that book but now you're going to be making money off the royalties from that book for the rest of your life yep and now you can travel yes now you can explore yep exactly you have the freedom now you can explore so creativity equals freedom yeah digital content equals freedom yeah all of those things equal abundance yeah Because now you can do anything you want. Yeah. So I think now, especially, it doesn't matter if you're 40 or if you're 14. Yeah. You need to be learning how to use the digital landscape to make money and get attention. Yeah. Because attention is the new currency. It is. It's just like it's just like any currency. If if um if I can help somebody and he opens a network to me. Now I've got more people that I can network with, more opportunities, right? Attention is an oppor- or is a is a currency. Money is a currency. Value, what I can do of service to somebody is a currency. Those are the currencies and before you can before you can really use those currencies to your advantage and and help it uh, benefit your life, you have to equip first. Like you said in the very beginning, spiritually, emotionally, physically. And those are my key 3. I want to do those key three every day because I'm advancing. And that's the hardest part. I, I had a conversation. I think maybe I'm a weirdo, but I think you probably have this same conversation with yourself where you're in the bathroom or just up in the morning. You have conversations with yourself, self-talk. And I'm, I'm just I, I I'm talking to myself and I say, what can I if I if I do if I am self-developing spiritually, emotionally, physically, then I'm every single day compounding those uh, those efforts. And I cannot give what I don't have. So I have to equip these things and then I can give. And then now I can tap into the currencies. But when you don't have, then you're gonna try to pull. You don't, you don't have money, you're give me force. money. Right. I don't have money, I don't know how, but give me money. And now entitlement. So there's so many things that, and I'm sure we'll do more podcasts like this, but there's so many things that, 
uh, school does, for example, you know, high school, college, fake atmospheres, fake atmospheres. And they always say stay away from fake toxic atmospheres, but kind of it's a fake atmosphere because it's not preparing you for reality. Reality says the more you develop, um, the more you develop, the more you'll be able to talk to people, the better connection you'll have with people. That's, that is your business. The better your relationships become, the better your business becomes. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of my, uh, that's, that's everything that is in my head is like, how can I continually equip so I can give? And then that gets to my business and my business. It's, it's just one big circle. So I think what it really comes down to the theme of this podcast is, constantly developing yourself yeah especially digitally yeah and understanding that in order for you to be free you have to leverage technology yeah and leverage creativity yes and so believe in yourself like you know it's like you said rome's not built overnight so shit might as well start you got to start somewhere and we all have a spiritual gift we have all we're all different You know, we're all different in different ways. Some people like skateboarding, football, basketball, tennis. There's so many different things. You know, just start creating an Instagram brand and start talking about the things you love. Because the more you try and explore, the more opportunities you're going to see. Like, oh, maybe I could sell t-shirts. Oh, maybe I could sell ads. Oh, maybe I can uh, get sponsors. Oh, there's just so many revenues. But you're always going to live in a not enough when you are in that scarcity mindset yeah that well and that comes from school it they tell you get a job and hopefully you get whatever job you get that sets you for life but man that sounds so boring and that's just like it sucks all the creativity out of you it's almost like don't believe in yourself dude i promise you i tried it now i'm a professor you don't want to go down that route get something secure that you're really good do they offer benefits do they get all this stuff and i know that's awesome to have benefits and all that stuff but man well, uh, th- what, what, I, what I looked at, the bottom line for me was my ceiling as a firefighter was set. Yeah. Maybe I could become a chief. Maybe I could make a quarter million dollars a year, which is a great salary. But I have to jump through all these hoops and sacrifice all these years. Yeah. Why not step back, work on developing myself, and then my ceiling is limitless. Yeah. My ability to do anything, my time is my own. Nothing is more important than controlling your time. And if you continually develop yourself every single day, one, you're going to be happy. Two, you're going to be healthy. And three, you're going to find your way. Mm -hmm. You're going to make money in some form or fashion because you're continually developing and people admire and respect that. And And you have a skill, which is a currency. My skill can now forever, no matter how much money I got, I got cameras. And I have a skill in video and photography and and photos and marketing. The more skills, the more value, the more opportunities, the more assets you have. Yeah. And you can go anywhere and do it. Yeah. You don't need to be here and do it. You can go to any country, any state, and you can create. You can write. You can record. Yep. You can um, pretty much take your skill set. And be remote. Take it somewhere. Be remote. And then learn from that culture and bring it back to your audience. Yes. You know, and I think what people don't understand is that you don't need that much to live. Nope. If you got a (laughs) shelter, if you got transportation and you got food, I was joking around this week that I want to start a new movement called homeless. Yeah. Right. So, hey, you're 25 years old. You can spend a year on the street, get yourself a tent and then still work. Save all your money. That'd be dope. Live in a van if you have to. Sick. Save all your money. Continually develop yourself. You got a Wi-Fi signal. Yeah. You got your your shelter. You can get enough food here and there. Yeah. But live different. Yeah. Try something else out. Stop buying. You don't need a car payment. If yeah. you're a teacher, why do you have a Lexus? Oh, Who are you man. trying to impress? The Joneses. Yeah. Who are you trying to impress? What do you want to have a nice car? to drive to the job that you spend your whole day at so that when you get home, you sleep in the house that you're, you're spending money on. You Now you're never enjoying the fruits of your labor. Yep. I would rather make less money, drive up a beat-up car, invest all my money in a growing industry yep. like uh, cryptocurrency, 
and watch my money grow. I don't I have the the greatest feeling in my life is when my investments are up 20, yeah. 30% yeah. in a day and I'm riding my bike or I'm driving my 2006 Nissan Altima. I can go out and buy a Ferrari if I want, but I don't want a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. I want to continually build what I've already started. Yep. And then when I get to a certain level, now I can begin to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Yeah. And that's really what my goal is. Yeah. Bottom line, the Joneses could potentially come from um, programming from your parents. Your parents always competed with your neighbors. So then you took that belief and that became your belief. And so now you just repeat their cycle and live their life. And living somebody else's life is very unhappy and it's miserable because you're not living you're living their life not your life and you're you're created to be your own person and it's just that is the summary of this whole thing is when you compare yourself to others you're not going to do the things you're naturally gifted at because you want to do what they're doing and so you want what they have and you don't even really know why and you want that girl so you get the car and and then or the car to get the girl and then what happens is that relationship starts off bad because you got the car to get the girl and the girl wanted you because of the car and then you're not the person that matches it's just that's when everything goes upside down it's like you you attracted a girl that wanted you for the car not for who you were so i think what people really need to do and if you're watching this still thank you very much i want you to take a look in the mirror and figure out what your values are. So for me, I knew that my values were health, development, and community. Mm -hmm. And what that led me to do is quit my job and open the gym so I can focus on my health and my time. Time is also a value of mine. And I know that if I continually develop, I'll be able to grow my community and help my community. So that's what led me to where I'm at now looking at my values. Once I figured out my values, I developed my mission. My mission is to help people build their lives around their health to experience abundance and freedom. Awesome. A beautiful state. Exactly. A state of being that they can be happy, healthy, and free. Yeah. And the beautiful state, just to tap into what you're talking about, the beautiful state actually becomes a person that is serving others and you're able to do more for others that also gets others to do more it's it's a uh it's a virus a yeah, coronavirus a chain a beautiful reaction. state yeah yeah it's a it's a different kind of virus yeah you know and what i also want you to do is after you figured out your values and you figured out your mission i want you to create your vision where do you want to go and guess what those things are going to change yep. because your mission is going to change as you evolve and your vision is going to change as you evolve. Yes. But you need to know what it is you're doing now. So when you know your mission and your values, you can look at every single decision that comes your way. Do you want to go out this weekend? Well, Saturday morning, I have a, a seminar. No, I don't want to go out because I want to do my seminar. Yeah. Do you want this drink? No, because my health is more important than getting buzzed. Yeah. You know, do you want to go out of town this weekend? No, I can't because I want to be there for my community. Yeah. Every single decision will filter back to your values. Yes. And that will allow you to continually progress on your mission. Yeah. If you have a job instead of a mission and you are unhappy so that when you leave your job, you forget about it and you use drugs and alcohol as your escape, as your escape, then you need to quit your job and you need to find your mission. Because when I go home, I'm thinking about the mission. When I go to bed, I'm thinking about the mission. Same. Every single day I'm working towards the mission. It doesn't matter if I have a gym or not. I'm still going to create content. Yes. I'm still going to help people. Yeah. I'm still going to give you the shirt off my back because that's my mission. Yeah. So I think that everyone needs to find what their mission is. Yeah. So if you're watching this now, I want you to put down in the comments what your mission is. Yeah. Your values are your framework. And that is your foundation. Your values are your foundation. It's like a framework in a house. And once you get that foundation now, like you said, you can add different pieces through the journey, but you've always got that foundation. You're never going to blow away. Exactly. Well, Jake, thank you so much for joining me today. Yep. I truly appreciate you and all the help that you've brought 
for me and my community. It's been tremendous. Yes. Jello, my of, pleasure too, of course. Yes. And um, I just want people to know that they can find you at Current Station. Yep. On Instagram. Yep. And that you are available yes. for social media content yeah. developing. Yep. And that um, Jake is very affordable. And he's not going to be very affordable for long. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this, jump on top yeah. because before you know it, you're going to be working with huge corporations and you're going to be fulfilling your mission on a broader scale. Yep. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And I look forward to talking to you again. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, brother.